Hello, good morning. Well, it's morning where we ha we are. Um, I hope it's a bright morning where you are. It certainly is uh, here today. Uh, we are doing our next class. And on this class, we're going to talk to you all about intensity uh, because we haven't talked about that in some of our classes and it's important. Now, you should have gone through our intensity guidelines at the beginning, so you should know about it already. But let's really address it in this class. So we're going to talk about it from a strength perspective with using the bands. And we're also going to talk about it from a cardiovascular point of view as well. Now, because that of that, we're going to start moving a bit earlier on in this class. So I'm going to get the girls starting with rocking the baby. So we're just going to start to turn in with the foot and just start moving straight away in this class. So you know this class is our moving class in this, in this section um, of the workouts. So we're going to turn the fit foot in, making sure that as we're turning in, we're allowing the heel to lift up off the floor and you're rotating in at your hip joint. And you're just allowing your arms to go down by your side. Now I haven't talked to you about core, we normally start with lifting up through the core, but let's have a think about whether you can start to now engage your core just by moving and thinking of your spine being really tall and it's like your arms are wrapping around, so think of it like a maypole and you've got those ribbons going around, we're literally wrapping the arms around that maple, that tall spine. So engage your core as you're doing this. So take some nice big deep breaths for me. Inhale, exhale. Can you feel your pelvic floor? A little bit, maybe. Can you feel your pelvic floor? And when you engage that pelvic floor, that stop a fart, stop a wee feeling, you're lifting up through your center and getting that lovely tall spinal position. Okay, we'll come back to standing. Remember, you can go back to your rocking the baby whenever you like, and we're going to start with some foot pedals. So you can put your hands on your hips or underneath your bump, wherever you want to put them. And if you feel your hip bones at the front, just pedal the feet. And as you pedal the feet, you can feel those hip bones underneath your hands. And you want to think about those staying quite level as you do this, yep? So you're just lifting up. Now, do you know, I can already feel the energy in this class. We're already, <laughs> we're already kind of like moving and we're getting quite excited. <laughs> and um, we might slow it down a little bit actually. But uh, as, as a response to that, you'll probably feel that your heart rate is already going faster. And this is, mm, we can start talking about this. We um, know that during pregnancy, your blood volume can go up to as much as 50% in your body. So that means you have extra blood flowing around your body. Now, the consequences of that to your cardiovascular system is quite significant because your heart is having to pump harder to get that blood going around your body. Yep. So, so in that case, that means your heart rate goes up Yep, and, and it will go up even without you moving. Yep, so it will go up already. That means that heart rate monitoring is a monitoring tool, an intensity tool in pregnancy just doesn't really work because your heart rate is already elevated. So it's really important we cue into other aspects of how you're feeling. And one of the best ways to do that, so we're going to slow our foot pedals down and just pick a foot up off the floor and start to engage the core now. So I'm going to carry on talking to you, but we're going to do what you already know because we've done this before in other classes. We're going to Engage the core of the foot. So press through the inside, the ball of the foot. Try and draw the arch of your left foot up and you're going to peel your right foot off the floor and just do those little circles. Now as you're doing that, you're lifting up through your pelvic floor. So stop a fart, stop a wee. Lift up into your belly. Draw the shoulders down. Think of your head position, bringing your chin in. Now, there's a really simple way to monitor your intensity, and it's called the talk test. Yeah, it's a really old, old style, change feet way of monitoring your intensity. But do you know what? It really does work, and it's really simple. And the rule of thumb is, for a moderate intensity, which is what, where we need to be working at, is you should be able to talk all the way through. Now, you will talk with a little bit of huffing and puffing in between, but you shouldn't feel that <gasps> you can't get any words out, okay? Which is what happens when you go, so change feet again, which is what happens when you go into higher intensities. So we need to be working at a moderate intensity. There's something called the RPE scale, which is the rate of perceived exertion. And that's another kind of way we can monitor intensity. And on a scale of 0 to 10, okay, change legs again, with 10 being, uh, sorry, with naught being, zero being rest, not doing anything at all, 10 being exhaustion, so you've kind of like collapsed, you need to be around four to five on that intensity scale, which is moderate to somewhat hard. It's around that, and that's where you can talk all the way through. So six, you'd feel you're working out hard. Seven would be very hard. Now, let's do it one more time, and then this time we're going to take the foot back behind. Now, 
you want to make sure that you are, can cope with the intensity you're working at. And the reason I've mentioned six, which is that, that going into a harder level, is that if you are already exercising and you're quite fit, it is permissible for you to take your intensity up a little bit more, yeah? Because you can cope with that. Because it's about recovery as well. And that's something that we're going to talk about. You always need to, when you stop exercising, feel your body recovering straight away. Okay? If your body doesn't recover, you know you're pushing it too much. So now we're going into a balance. Let's really key back into our core muscles. So stop a fart, stop a wee, lift up into your belly and really squeeze your right buttock as you're taking your leg back behind. I'm just going to check the girls to make sure they're doing it right. Yes, very good. I can see buttocks squeezing. And also, very importantly, they're really lifting their bellies in. Use your hands to help you do that so that the back doesn't bow. Yeah? You're getting that real strong feeling through your core. And then change legs. Remember to breathe breathe as you're doing this. So take a nice big deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Peel the foot off the floor, but then we're going to take the foot back behind. Squeeze into the buttocks. Lift the belly in. Take the opposite hand in. Now work those shoulder blades down as well and bring your chin in as you're doing this. So talking back, uh, back about intensity again, obviously all of this is on that video which you've got right at the beginning and if you've forgotten it, make sure you recap it and, and listen again about intensity and where you should be. And then we're going to change. And then if we all come forward just a little bit more, we're going to do a step back on the next one. So we're going to peel the right foot off the floor. And then as we start to increase the intensity of this class, I'll start asking the girls where they feel they are in terms of intensity. So take the leg back behind, squeeze into the buttocks, work the shoulders down, <laughs> bring your chin in and just lengthen. But this time, we're going to step back with the right foot and go into that kind of calf stretch position. So if we can have a side view on this one, everybody should have their leg back behind them. And we need to lift and lower through the calf because we need to really warm the calves up. Now, as you're doing this, make sure that your heel is dropping back down. And I want everyone to check where the heel is going. Now, we can see in the mirror, which is really useful. Remember, you can use uh, your phone or you can use a mirror as well to check that your feet are in the right position. And that's really important because we want these hips square to the front. Because when these hips are square to the front, it, make, it enables us to align the body, release tension in certain muscles that we tend to hang on, and it helps us to connect to our core a little bit better. So make sure that that heel isn't turning in. Imagine your feet are fixed in tram lines. Okay, so anyone got tight calves this morning? Yes, we've all got tight calves in the studio. I don't know about how your calves are feeling, but really important to warm them up, particularly as we're going to get quite active today. So you need to keep moving them through. Now place the heel down, and I'll now I want you to engage your core. So you're going to squeeze your right buttock. So that's helping to support you. You're going to lift up from the back of your pelvic floor and into your belly. And then we're going to try our bow and arrow movement. So take the arms out in front, bring your chin in, take a breath for me, inhale. As you exhale, drive the right arm back, lift up through your center, and then bring it, in, bring it back in. And then take another breath, inhale, exhale, take the left arm back, breathe, and then inhale, bring it back. Let's do it one more time each way. You exhale as you slide back, and you lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. Bring it back in. Last one, inhale, exhale, slide it back. Keep working the shoulder blades down and then bring it back in, well done. Okay, so we're gonna change legs now. Let's start by doing that peel up of the foot off the floor. Rotate the ankle around, a couple of times each way. And then we're gonna take the leg back behind, take the heel down, okay? And then let's have a think about whether if we feel any difference on this side to the other side. Anyone feel tighter? Yeah, feeling tighter. Now, Kirsten, you were saying you're get, you've been getting some pains in your back, yeah? So Kirsten's been feeling some pains in the back. So you feel you're tighter on that, on that foot. Is your heel wanting to turn in? Or is it not too bad? Just so the heel is okay, but you generally feel some tightness going through this side of your body, okay? So Kirsten's saying that her back's been hurting her and she's really been wanting to release it. This is really common that we'll have one side of the body that's tighter than the other. And this is why it's so important to do this releasing work and recognize where our imbalances are in our bodies and trying to align our bodies that much more. So keep releasing that heel and let's have a think about other movement patterns down this left side. So now if you hold your heel down, I want you to engage and squeeze your left buttock. Can you feel your buttock squeeze? Yeah. And then this is going to be telling on your back as you do this movement. So engage your core, work the shoulders down, and then pull the left arm back. Now do you feel restricted as you do that? 
You're okay. Yeah, so Kirsten's just said that she's, she's okay doing this movement, but she can feel it's tighter down that left side. So one of our objectives in this class is to make sure that we can get that to release for Kirsten and that she's not feeling quite so much that that, that ache and that pain on that side of her body. Okay, and then let's go back into our rocking the baby. And one of the best ways we can help to alleviate that is by using the core muscles. And if you think of your core muscles as like clamps literally holding onto your spine, what that does is it helps to stabilize your body. And that's why it's so important that we, that we work on these core muscles. Because what happens otherwise is that other muscles start to kick in. Um, and Jana was saying as well, also that she was, when you were getting up, you were feeling some pain as she was lifting herself up. And, and that was probably because her core muscles weren't engaged enough. Hormones are starting to rise, yep. Yeah? At this stage in the pregnancy, they're gonna rise a little bit more later on, and we'll talk about that a bit, a bit more later on. But everyone is, gets affected differently and at different times. And it's really important to be conscious of the fact that when hormones start to rise, it can have a physical effect on our body, which can cause these aches and pains. Listen to them. Use your core, try to get release any tension, try to improve your movement pattern. If the pain is still there, always go to your GP, go to your midwife, ask them if they've, you know, and they can, they can um, help you with that. But also tell us as well through the forum, let us know if you've got any aches and pains and see if we can help you with them. But make sure if you really can't explain it that you go back to your GP and you, and you, and you ask them as well. Okay, so we're gonna do a couple of stretches now. So I'm gonna ask the girls to go over to the bar. I'm gonna stay here. So let's start with a hip stretch. So you're gonna cross your right foot in front of your left and then just bend the supporting knee and sticking your bottom out behind you. So you're just taking your butt back behind you and then feeling a stretch going into your hip on the right side. Now, this is gonna stretch out the muscles that attach to the base of your spine and through to your hip. These often can get really tight and this might be a really helpful stretch for Kirsten. I think her pain was slightly higher up but this is definitely gonna help her when she does her left side. So I'm gonna ask her whether she feels a difference on her right to her left side when she does this stretch. So all of these stretches are really important, particularly if you're feeling any aches or pains or discomfort around this area of the back, yep? So do this stretch, and it's a really useful one because you can do it anywhere. You can do it standing up. So you could hold onto the kitchen sink doing it. Uh, you could hold onto a desk, as long as obviously whatever you're holding onto doesn't move. That's really important. Um, you can do it outside. You can hold onto a railing, onto a park bench. Just make sure that you are um, lifting your tailbone up a little bit and bending the supporting knee. So if I do it wrong for a second, you don't want to round your back. Yeah, you can see me doing it wrong. I'm sticking my chin out. I'm going to bring my chin in. I'm going to stick my bottom out, and then I'm going to bend my knee. And that's how you want to do this stretch. So we're going to change sides now. So Kirsten, as you change, how's that left side feeling? Yeah, so Kirsten's saying it's definitely a little tight on the left side, which is where she's been feeling those, those, that discomfort and pain. So if you get these feelings, do these stretches. Listen to your body. Think about how it might feel tighter down one side. Try to breathe into the stretch. So you breathe, you inhale, you exhale. Lift that tailbone up as you're doing this stretch. So you're taking your foot onto your thigh. And that's a good point actually to point out is that your foot is on your thigh, not your ankle. You're sticking your bottom out and then you're bending your supporting knee and feeling that stretch going into the hip. Okay, we're now gonna do our quad stretch. So you're gonna take a hold of one foot. Now, if you look at our quad stretch masterclass, you'll see that I adapt this by using a chair. So if you're struggling, you cannot hold onto your foot, which is really, really common, well, for, for a lot of people, whether you're pregnant or not, but even particularly, uh, more important in pregnancy and the reason you need to be really careful when you take hold of your foot is again because of instability and at the moment you may be fine but as you get more pregnant hormones start to surge just that action of picking up the foot can become really difficult so have a look at our masterclass on quad stretching and use a chair if you need to you're going to make sure that you're opening through the front of your hip and you're pushing your kneecap down as you do this and you're lifting in through your core so your core engagement is really important here so let's focus on that take a nice big deep breath inhale exhale 
Lift up through the pelvic floor and into your belly. Push your kneecap down and push your hip forward to feel that stretch in the front of your thigh. Sit. And then you're going to change legs. So do the other side. Perfect. So carefully pick your foot up. Try to keep your knees together or close together as you take hold of your foot. And then engage your core, lift in through your center. Push your kneecap down. Look straight ahead. Bring your chin in. Take a nice big deep breath. Inhale. Exhale. Push your kneecap down and lift into your center, hollow and breathe. And then just think about pushing your hip forward to get that stretch all the way through the front of the leg and into the hip. That's good. Okay, now we've already done a bit of releasing on the calves, but you may want to do a bit more releasing. And let's just do a variation of a calf stretch here, because this is important as well, particularly if you do feel tightness in the calf. So I want to get the girls to go into the bar and just take one leg back behind, as they were doing, um, as we were doing in that um, bow and arrow sequence. But now, what I want you to do, so feel a stretch on your calf with your leg back behind you. Now I want everyone to step their right foot in, so the back leg, step it in, so it's not as far back out, that's it. And now bend your right knee and push your knee forward and push it forwards and push it forwards. So you're just bending your right knee. That's it. Actually, can we go to a side view on this, please? And push your knee forward. So you're trying to push your right knee forwards. Your left leg could almost come off the floor. Now, if you don't feel any stretch, do you feel a stretch? Okay. If you feel a stretch on this, this is the, the deeper set of calf muscles. Sometimes you don't feel this stretch because you're just not tight in that area. But if you do have issues in the calves, you can get really tight. This is called the soleus muscle. So it's a deeper calf muscle. Um, and sometimes it's, it's the one that can really cause those cramping and, and, and restriction in the calves. So if you do the stretch and you really feel it, you know this is a good one for you. So change legs. So do the, the straight leg first of all. So your standard calf stretch. Uh, with your leg back behind you, engage your core, push your hips forward, bend your right knee, engage your core. And then you're just going to step your left foot in, bend your left knee, and push the knee forwards. And your right foot, you kind of can take the weight off it a little bit because you're trying to load into the left foot. Just keep bending your left knee, bend it, bend it, push the knee forward, bend it, bend it, push the knee forward. So your bottom will sink down a bit as you do that. And just try and feel a stretch. Okay? And then release it. Well done. Okay, so we're going to come back to the mats now, and we're going to start by using our wide band. Now, you can use your handle bands, um, or you could use a towel to do this. You do want a little bit of pull. You want to keep this straight, which is why if you've got something that's stretchy, that is a bit better than a towel, but if you haven't got anything, then you can just use a towel. That's fine. We want a bit of tension in whatever you're holding, and then we're going to do our tightrope walk. So we're going to take the right foot in front and the left foot behind. Now, this is all about engaging the core in a really imbalanced position. So you're going to have to squeeze into your left buttock. Take a nice big deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, and then as you exhale, you engage your pelvic floor, draw it through the core of the feet, and take the band back and up. Now, I'm not going to go back behind my head, but the girls can go back behind the head if they want to. And then take another breath, inhale, exhale, and bring the band back down. And then you're going to do that again. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, take the band up, work the shoulder blades down, keep your chin in. And then inhale, exhale, and bring the band down. Now, just so you know, you can go all the way back behind your head. Inhale, exhale, take the band up. Squeeze the buttock on the back leg, which is the left leg at the moment. If you wanted to, you could go all the way back. And then inhale, exhale, bring the band back. And if we can have a side view on this, we'll do one more on this side. And what's really important is that our backs aren't moving as we do this. So take another breath. Inhale, exhale. So if I take it all the way back, you must really make sure that when you're doing this, you're not arching the back as the band goes back behind. Keep your chin in as well. So back of the neck nice and long. Inhale, exhale, and bring the band back. And then we're going to change sides. So this is always telling when you change sides if you feel a little bit less stable. Um, now, Kirsten was talking about pain going on to, into her left side. Now, often that's because one side is tighter than the other, but that may also mean that you're less stable on, on your right 
leg behind yeah so so when you have a, a leg that you kind of tend to load a bit more it tends to be more stable so the one that you don't load on tends to be make you a little bit more wobbly so that's why it's really good to do these exercises because now Kirsten's having to work on that side that's a little bit less stable so I want them to really focus on her core strength now and you need to do the same at home on this side if it's less stable for you so take a breath inhale exhale squeeze the buttock on your right leg really engage it lift up through the core muscles work the shoulder blades down you can take the arms all the way back if you want to I'm just going to hold them up take another breath inhale exhale and come forwards and remember you don't even have to go that far inhale exhale take your arms up as high as you want to you can go all the way back if you want to or you can just come to shoulder height or just below shoulder height inhale exhale and release and come back down let's do that two more times so take a breath inhale exhale lift the arms up and over the head option to go all the way back behind option to stay in front and then inhale exhale take the band back lift in through your core muscles keep the chin in and then we're going to do it one more time keep squeezing the right buttock lift up through your core muscles draw up through the core of the feet often when you do that initially it makes you more wobbly because you're suddenly your your brain's going oh I've got to use my feet core of my feet and it switches your attention and you lose your balance so don't worry if that happens and then release it let's go back into rocking the baby does that feel quite intense when you do that yeah. you feel like you're doing something yeah good brilliant oh that's really good so Kirsten just said that when the first class when she did that she felt really wobbly and now she's feeling stronger when she does the action so she's very happy about that so that's so 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 that's a good progression for her and and I hope you feel those progressions too and let us know about how you are feeling make sure you go on the forum and tell us how you are feeling and whether you feel those progressions because that's the whole point of this is that we're all progressing together Okay, so we're going to um, work a little bit harder now with our bands. So we're going to grab our bands now. Um, now, on the website, we've got information about how to use the bands. I'm just going to swap those around. I've just realized, actually, we had positioned our bands in the wrong place. So I'm going to give those to you. Uh, and put those over here. So while we're doing this, sorry about this, we just positioned our bands in the wrong place. I would like you to do some stretches if you want to. So um, Fee, maybe you can do a quad stretch again if you need to. So have a pick up of a stretch that you feel you need to do um, just while we're doing this. So don't waste any time basically. Always have stretches to hand that you can do. So you know you've got a bit, a bit of tightness, you can just stretch it through. Yeah, whichever side you know is tightest, do some stretches on that tight side right now. Always make use of that time. You've also got your rocking the baby that you can do whenever you want to as well. Okay, I think we've got our bands in the right place now. So um, on the website, you will see there is a guide to using bands. Now, we are, I kind of color-coded it because typically this is how it goes. Red is a very light band. Green is a moderate band. Blue is a, um, um, a harder band. Black is um, a harder band than a blue. And then often you then get another even higher level of band. You can also get a yellow band, which is an even easier band. But generally speaking, you're working with a red and then a green, and then a blue, and then a black band, okay? So I've got the girls working with a green and a blue band, and I, I would advise you, if you've not done any training before, you get a red and a green. Um, if you've done some training, you get a blue and a green, and if you're really, really fit, you can work with a blue and a black or, or a black band. Okay, so, you all right? Did you get, oh, you got a black one. <laughs> <laughs> Fee's just panicking now because she's got a black band. I didn't realize I'd given her a black one. Okay, all right, so let's have a side camera, please. We're going to pull back into a lunge position. You've all done this before. So I'm going to come forward. So you guys pull back on your bands, uh, uh, on your mat, so your bands is nice and taut. And then we're going to come up nice and tall into that lunge position. We've practiced this before. You've also got this in the master classes, so you should know what you're doing now. Come up nice and tall. We're going to start to work into our lunge position. So you're going to drive down and then lift back up. Now the number of repetitions you do here is key and the speed at which you go is also key. So talking about that intensity, we want to get the heart rate up, but you want to be able to still talk at whatever pace you're doing. So I'm gonna keep chatting to the girls to make sure they can talk to me. So if you're thinking, well, I'm on my own at home, who am I gonna to talk to? Just, um, you could try singing a song, yeah? Or <laughs> you could just try talking back to me and s tell me, give me some abuse if you like. But just make sure you can talk all the way through. So you want to feel your heart rate going up. 
and you want to feel um, you're working up a sweat, you can feel your body temperature going up, but you feel in control. You want to feel challenged, but definitely in control of what you're doing. So I haven't counted how many, but how many have we done now? About 10? Yeah. yeah? Now, if you've got to the, the same number of reps as the girls and you're thinking, I need to stop now, stop. Remember, you can go into rocking the baby and you can allow your heart rate to recover. Okay, we're now going to change arms, do the other side. So take a hold of your bands into the other side. And then take the left leg back behind this time. And we'll need another side view. And then just lower down and lift back up. And if we stay on a side view this time, I'll talk into the side camera as we're doing this. Because you need to be very focused on your positioning. You need to make sure that you've got that vertical line driving through your body. You're squeezing your buttocks right at the top. You're getting that height and you're reconnecting to your core before you pull. So you lift up through your pelvic floor and then you lower and lift. You keep working the shoulder blades down. You keep your chin in. You keep breathing. So much to think about. Everyone's doing really well. Now, I actually hope that we start to see the girls going at different paces because I want them to really tune into how they're feeling. Maybe that they're all able to go at the same pace. <laughs> um, but I want them to really think about how they're feeling in terms of their intensity. Okay, can you still talk all the way through? I'm going to talk to you all now. Can you talk? Yeah? yeah? How are you doing, Fee? Yeah. Yes, you okay? Jana, you okay? Yeah, okay. Fee's saying just about, she's got that black band. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so <laughs> so obviously when the resistance is higher, it's going to be a little bit harder to pull. You're going to put a bit more energy into it. So slow it down if you need to. That's really important. I think we've done enough on that one there. Okay, so now we're going to go straight into our next move, which is our side-to-side -side move. So we're going to take the bands to one side. And we're going to hold on to both bands and just start with using a side-to-side -side pattern. So we're just going to go side-to-side. -side. So if we can have a side view, just so you can see our movement, and we're going to go at different paces. Some of us are going forward, some of us are going back. That's all fine. I'm actually going to slow myself right down here. So the point is, is that you go at a pace that's right for you. It's not an exercise in music class. We're not having to work at a certain pace. This is very much you dictating what pace you are going at. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to connect your core muscles in this position. So you're lifting up through your pelvic floor and into your belly as you move side to side. So you lift in through your core as you pull. You lift in through your core as you pull. So just feel the pull of the bands and breathe it through. And then you can start to move the arms. So I'm just going to bring my arms across my body here. And what I want you to do is I want you to play around with this. You can start to rotate a little bit more. You can see I'm going back a bit more and then front a little bit more. You can start to lift your arms up. That's going to make it much harder if you do it the way I'm doing it right now. Yeah. Or you can just keep your arms nice and close to where you are right now. How are you doing with that black band, Fee? You okay? <laughs> <laughs> it's just surviving. <laughs> okay, keep it going. Okay, so how's your heart rate doing? It's going, going up, yeah? But remember, our heart rate monitoring... It's going to go up disproportionately to actually the amount of energy you're using. So we're not going to actually find out what your heart rate is at, but we are going to listen to your breathing and using that talk test, can you still string a sentence together? Could you still talk quite happily? That's where you need to do. And you'll, be able, you'll have to huff and puff a little bit in between your words, but the point is you can still get those words out. That's really important to keep it at that moderate intensity level. Okay, we're going to rest it there. And then we're going to drop one of our bands. So you can choose to use your harder or your easier band. If you've got the same strength bands, I've got the same strength. Just use one band. You don't need two for this one. Because we're going to do a pushing action. A pushing action is much harder than a pulling action. Um, we're also, it's difficult in terms of those lunges. So I'm not going to lunge in this one. I'm going to give you the option not to lunge. So you're going to come up nice and tall, squeeze into the buttocks. I'm going to come forward a little bit. So when we do a side view, you can see me. So come up nice and tall. And then I'm going to ask the girls to lunge down and then lift back up. I'm going to stay up. So I'm just going to stay up in this position here. Now, this is for you, if you find lunging really, really difficult, here's the thing, you don't have to lunge, yep? Yeah? You can just hold your positions. So if we have a side view now, you can see I'm up in the top part of a lunge, which is still a functional movement pattern, and I'm squeezing my buttocks, but it's much easier to control. So you can do that as well if you need to. 
And I'm really, as, as I push through, I'm really lifting up through my pelvic floor and into my belly. So you've literally just got one foot in front, one foot behind in that split position, but really lifting in through the core muscles and pushing the arm through. And you can do that. If you find it difficult to lunge, that's absolutely fine to do. Let's try one more movement, and then we're going to change sides. We're going to do the other side. So we're just going to move the bands along so we can go on to the other side. So again, come up nice and tall, squeeze into the buttocks, and then we're going to push. So off you go. So press and push. Now make sure as you're doing this, you're keeping your body up nice and tall. So you squeeze into the buttocks. You've got that vertical drop and lift back up. And you're really thinking of lifting through your center as you do this. Keep working the shoulder blades down the back of your rib cage. And you're trying to keep your hips square to the front as you do this. And this is really important so that we release tension in the body, not create tension. So you keep trying to push the hip underneath you. And we want to feel strength, but we also want to feel, every movement's got to feel good. It's got to feel like it flows. And that's really important as well. So if you find one side harder than the other, maybe lessen the intensity. So we could lessen it by just moving back a little bit so there's less tension in the band. You want your body to flow. You want to feel you can push all the way through with your arm. And when it starts to get hard, you know then that's the point to stop. That's when you're fatiguing. Do one more. Yep, okay, and release. So now we're going to do our side-to-side -side movement on the other side. So let's stick with the front camera for the moment. You want your bands, by the way, to be in front, yeah? So you don't want them in line with you or directly going over your bump, yeah? You need, need the bands slightly in front, and then you're going to start that side-to-side -side movement. And if we can have a front view on this now, you can see we've got our legs quite wide, Sorry, side view. I don't know if I said front view then. I mean side view. Side view now, please. Um, if you can see, our legs are quite wide. And that makes it much harder to connect to your core. Because the pelvic floor basically is in a lengthened position. So to lift up through the pelvic floor is quite hard. What you will be able to feel, though, is the trunk muscles quite strongly, actually. Particularly the oblique muscles, which are the waist muscles. And your trick in this position is to still try and use those deeper core muscles, which is the pelvic floor, and the deep abdominal muscle, which is called the transversus abdominis. Now, you use those muscles by, again, stopping a fart, stopping a wee, and trying to lift in through your center. So each time you pull the band, you lift in through those core muscles. Lift in through those core muscles. How does that feel in your left side? Are you okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, now, because Kirsten had that restriction and that pain in her left side, what I want her to do is not work on so much resistance, but work more on freeing her body up a little bit more and just trying to move with it a bit more. So what I'm going to do is ask you to drop a band. So just I'll take that one. And then just move your body a little bit more. Okay, and allow your arms to move. Is that? Perfect. And just l let your body move a bit more. Movement is really powerful to releasing tension. And sometimes you want to think about what's right for you right now. So going back to intensity and resistance, it might be that you just need to move the little bit lower resistance and just get your body moving that little bit more. So always listen to your body. And if you've got any of those aches and pains, maybe lower the resistance and just think about movement patterns. When you feel your body flowing, then you know that's a good thing. If you can feel your core muscles working, then you know that's a good thing. Let's go for four more. So lift in through your center, two more, and one more, and then you're there, well done. Okay, so we're gonna have a little bit of a break, and you're gonna do some stretches again. So if you go to the bar girls, you can do your quad stretches. You can take a hold of a foot, push your hip down, get that length into the front of the thigh. Do the stretches that you know are really good for you to do. So a little break, grab some water, and then we're going to do our movements again. So we're keeping that heart rate up. Is everybody feeling okay? Yeah? Um, do you feel your heart rate coming down now? Sure? <laughs> I think so. Okay, so, so this is really important, is that you recover. Yep, you get that feeling of recovery. If you're feeling your heart rate is staying up there and you're not feeling it drop, 
then you're maybe working a little bit too, or not feeling it drop straight away, then you're maybe working out a little bit too high intensity. Yep? So you need to calm it down just a little bit. So think about slowing your movement down or working with less resistance. Okay, how do we feel? Ready to go again? Should we try it again? So we're gonna go into our lunge position. So let's have a side view camera, please. And into your lunges. Right leg goes back behind. And then we're gonna lift up nice and tall. And then I'm gonna ask the girls to lunge down. I'm gonna stay up. So again, if you find struggling with lunges, you can just adopt the position I'm in. So take a breath, inhale, exhale, and start to pull. Okay, and then you can lower and lift. Also, by staying up, you will lower in your intensity as well. So if you are struggling a little bit, you don't have to lunge maybe quite so low. So I'm gonna do a little half lunge now. So I'm just gonna go down a little way, but not all the way down. So this is all the way down, yep. But I'm gonna just go down a little way. And that can be just all you need to do. So keep breathing it through, squeezing your buttocks at the top, working your shoulders down as you're doing the movement. Make sure that you've got that vertical line through your body. And let's just go to front view now, because I'm gonna just have a look at everybody's alignment. And this is really important actually, is that we're keeping everything straight on. So Kirsten, I want you to bring your right heel out for me a little bit more. Can you do that? Bring your right heel towards me a little bit. That's it. So what's, what's happening is you're leaning towards your left side. Can you feel that? So I want you to put more weight into your right side as you lunge. It's hard, but that's what you need to do. So that's something you can try at home. If you know you've got a tighter side, try and put more weight into the other side of your body and try and pull more and resist more from that side. Okay, and then change arms, change legs. So we're gonna do the other side now. So right leg in front, left leg behind. And then lift up nice and tall, squeeze into the buttocks and then lower down and then lift. So I'm gonna stay up again so you can do the same thing that I'm doing. And then I'm just gonna squeeze into the buttocks and just stay standing as I do this. Keep working the shoulders down, keep getting that length into your neck. Make sure you're engaging and lifting up through that pelvic floor before you pull. So you lift up through your pelvic floor and into your belly. And if you're still struggling to feel your pelvic floor, Go back to the master class on the pelvic floor. And remember there are those pelvic floor workouts. There's a five minute one, a 10 minute one. Uh, make sure you visit those workouts and do them daily. It's really important. You don't have to watch them. You can just listen to them. You don't need to watch them. So you can listen to them when you're on the train, when you're on the bus, when you're in the car, uh, and just do your pelvic floor exercises. <laughs> Two more. We'll do one more here. Now you can stop before we finished if you need to, and then we'll do our side to side movement. Okay, how's everyone feeling in terms of intensity? You okay? You all right? So Kirsten's saying it's definitely more than last, last week. Okay, so now just moving side to side. So I want, this is where I want everyone to kind of just really put blinkers on and just go at their own pace. So start by moving side to side. And then think about engaging that core. Think about that pull coming around the right side of your body and that you're having to engage the core muscles and then you can start to move your arms however you want to move it. And you can start to rotate through your torso a little bit more as long as you're engaging your core with each movement. So lift in through your center as you're doing it. Keep lifting through your core, keep breathing. Keep your breathing calm and slow. Deep breathing that helps you to connect with your core muscles and it also helps to take tension away where you don't need it. So keep breathing it through. Let's go for four more moves here, but you can stop beforehand if you need to. Just stop whenever you want to. And last one. And then we're gonna go into that chest press position now. So we're gonna check our alignment. We need to make sure that the feet are like fixed in tram lines and we're gonna start in that really tall position. So start up nice and tall, lift up through your pelvic floor into your center and then you're gonna lower down and then lift back up. The other thing to watch for when you're doing these lunges is obviously not pushing forward, so we're going directly vertically down and back up, but also watch the front knee. There's always a temptation, I'm doing it wrong at the moment, to turn the knee in. So to help you with your knee position, you should feel a little bit of engagement in the buttock 
on the front leg. Just push your knee out a little bit and see if you can squeeze your buttock at the top. And when you can, you know that you've got that. Does that make sense? So as you lower down, so just hold your lunge, hold, push your knee out. Sit, and then lift back up. Feel your bottom? So you, you should actually have a little bit of glute engagement. So that stability through the glutes here helping you do that movement. Okay, so lower down again. Lift back up, and let's just do two more. You can stop now if you need to. Listen to your body. One more. And then change sides. So other side. So left leg behind, right leg in front. Come up nice and tall. Squeeze into your buttocks. Work the shoulders down. And then you're going to lower down and lift back up. And lower down and lift back up. Now I'm going to hold still while the girls lower and lift. So, Kirsten, can you see that on your right knee? Yeah. So, again, we know this right side on you is a little bit less stable than the left. So, I want you to actually take your, turn, take your foot out ever so slightly. The toes, a teeny tiny bit, that's it. But now, push your knee out. Much better. Now, it's going to feel awkward, but if you make yourself work that way, you're going to get stronger. Yeah? And at home, I want you to do the same thing. When your knee's doing that, draw it out. Check your alignment with your foot. There's a fine line between being two turned in and two turned out. Yep. In, in fact, it's about a three to five degree toe turnout, which is tiny, but it, it should feel quite natural. And remember to use the core of your foot, because that's going to really help as well if you're using the core of your foot, she says as she falls over, when you're doing that. So draw up through the core of your foot. Okay, now, whilst I've been rabbiting on, everyone's done about 100 repetitions. You okay? Do you want to stop there? Okay, right, next one, side to side. So, last one. So, get your side to side movement going. And so, start with the side to side movement. Should feel good. You want to think about flow, your body moving nicely, and then... Just start pulling the bands across your body and then lifting in through your pelvic floor and then just allow your body to move how it wants to move. And we've been kind of keeping the arms fairly close, but you can push the arm down, you can push the arm up, you can rotate a bit more, you can push both arms down, you can pull a little bit more. So just, just keep moving in a way that feels good to you. And always keep your bands taut as you're doing this. If the bands go slack, there's two things that happen. One, you won't get the resistance, but two, it also you lose a bit of your stability because the bands are actually helping to support you a little bit in a weird way because of, of the kind of connection to the wall. It actually helps support you with that resistance. So you, when your bands go slack, you lose that. So you want to make sure they're taut all the way through. We're going to attempt another four. How's your heart rate doing? Is it going up? Feel it going up, but do you feel you can talk to me? Fee, sure. She's been using that black band. <laughs> she's like, I think I'm okay. Yeah, no, she's, she's still alive. It's okay, it's all right. Uh, Jana, how are you doing? Yeah, cool, cool. I think everybody's okay. I think we are. I hope you're okay as well. Okay, two more. One more. And you're there, well done. Brilliant. Okay, uh, let's just do another quad stretch. So, and you can choose your stretch here. So you can do a quad stretch, or you can do a hip stretch, or you can do a calf stretch, or you can do combination or all of them. You've always got the option to pause your video right now and spend a bit more time on stretches if you want to. So we're just going to stretch it through. So this is not like a conventional class where you warm up, you do a main bit, and then you stretch, um, because we have to listen to our bodies all the way through. And this is what the powerful pregnancy is all about. It's not about, right, this is a workout. This is what I want you to do. This is a way of doing stuff, and we want you to take that on and use it, not just in the classes, but in every aspect of what you're doing. So I want you to think about when you do feel tension, restriction in your body, how can you release that? How can you get rid of it? Can you do some gentle movements? If you're sat at a desk all day, uh, could you just do some rocking the babies because your body's feeling tight and restricted? Could you do some of these stretches during your day? So try to incorporate all this stuff into everyday life. And yes, you can do stretches from cold as long as you do it gently and you don't force yourself and you don't do anything really aggressively. Um, 
never do anything aggressively, never attack this kind of thing. Everything should be done with consideration and thought. So always have a mind awareness whenever you're, whenever you're doing something. And that's so important, not just for your exercise, but also for your pregnancy and also for your birth. It's about connecting the mind to all of this. And that's going to help you. I can't tell you how much it's going to help you through the birth as well. Okay, so now we're going to come down to the floor. We're going to grab some blocks. So this class has really been very much about doing cardio and strength, but we need to kind of finish it off on a calm level. So we're going to have the block underneath our right knee and just come forwards and just lift in through your center and get that stretch at the front of your thigh. We're going to um, use the hands and pull up. Now, talking about aches and pains, if you feel any aches and pains when you're doing this stretch, ease off, pull back. So you can kind of take a less long position and still get a stretch by using your hands and pulling up over here and using the hands to pull the skin up over your hip and feel that stretch going into your hip right at the top okay and then change sides and this is something we're going to address in the next section of the powerful pregnancy which is when you hormones start to really take a hold of your body usually around 21 weeks, but can be a little bit before. Um, and we start to get pains that we really need to listen to. So we'll talk about that a little bit more now. But if you are starting to get any feelings now that don't feel the same, feel a little bit different, remember always go and ask expert advice and help. So that might be your GP, it might be your midwife. Feel free to come onto the forum. But if you've really got something unexplained, don't wait. Yep, ask someone straight away what they think that, that might be. Okay, so just come forward a little bit if you can. If it feels good, come forward, stretch through that hip. And then release it. And then we're going to come down onto the knees, and we're going to do our puppy dog stretch. So we're just going to take the knees wide, and if we can have a side view on this, our hands are going to be forward, and we're going to stick the bottom up. So again, this is on your other workouts, and it's in your master classes. So just allow your body to sink back and breathe. And I really want you to relax your breathing now. So hold this for a couple more breaths, inhaling and exhaling. And I love finishing the class in this way. And I know we haven't done much floor work today. I promise we will um, in other classes. And as I say, you've got all those master classes where you can just pick out individual pieces if you want to. Um, but the intention today was to step up the cardio and the strength. So I hope you feel you've had a really great workout. And let's just leave it on this point and, and recognize how brilliantly the girls have done the class today and how brilliantly you have done at home. And just goes to show what you can do in pregnancy. You have just done the most active workout um, strength training, cardiovascular, uh, working every aspect of your body. And hey, you can do it. And it's fine to do it. Just remember to always listen to your body, to listen to your intensity. If you feel your breath getting really short, then you need to c calm it down. And when you do stop, listen to your recovery. You should be able to recover within a couple of um, well, within 30 seconds to a minute, definitely by two minutes, you should be fully, fully recovered. And if you're not recovering, then you know you need to work out at a lower intensity. I hope that's been helpful and we look forward to seeing you again on your next workout.